I love drawing. Not really great at it, but I do it sometimes. I was doodling one day and came up with this. I worked on it a bit, made the eyes a bit bigger, and this was the final sketch with color. Then I wondered how it would look in 3D. And after a few minutes of modeling, this is how it turned out. At the end, I made a quick animation to showcase my sh the animation skills. Watch till the end to see it. Before we start, as always you can find all the 3D files and real time videos of making the characters from the channel in my Gumroad and Patreon page. It also supports the channel and help me make more videos like this. Link in the description. Let's go. First I start with a sphere. In the sculpt mode, while in front view, shape it like a head. And from the side view, shape the back of the skull and reform the shape. Made a line for the chin and cheeks. Then a hole for the eyes. And push it back with a grab brush. From the side view, then I smoothed the whole thing out. For the ears, I added another sphere, I scaled it down, I squeezed it and put it on the ear spot, rotate it and in the sculpt mode, using grab brush, shaped it like an ear. Using clay strip brush pronounced the eyebrows and nose even more. Picking grab brush, reforming the shape of the face, to get a more feminine face. With clay strip brush, sculpting the eye socket, then using grab brush, I drag out the nose. Since it's more like Disney style, I push in the top of the nose inside and make it pointier in the front. Make a hole for the nostrils. I start sculpting the upper and lower lips. In the modifier properties, I add a multi-res modifier so we can sculpt more details. Based on the sketch we've done, the mouth is slightly open, so I keep some distance between the upper and lower lips. For the teeth, I added a cylinder. I scale it down and place it in the mouth. Also I scale down the length. It's just a placeholder to see how the teeth looks in the mouth, not the final look. Then I start pronouncing the lips even more using crease brush. Using the same brush, I pronounce the eye socket even more. Do the same thing to the nostrils. Add a sphere for the eyes. In the edit mode, scale it down and place it in the eye socket. Then add a mirror modifier so we have it on the other side as well. Select the head again. Using clay strip brush, start putting some clay on the eye area and form the upper and lower eyelid. Then sharpen the edges by using crease brush and holding control, just draw a line on the edges of the eyelid to give them a noticeable edge. Add a cylinder for the neck, a sphere for the torso, squeeze it and rotate Rotate it, duplicate it, and in the edit mode, move it on the shoulders and shape it. In the object data properties, remesh it so we can work on it easier. Then add a mirror modifier so we can have it on the other side. For the torso, push the bottom of the chest inside, then push in the sides as well. Select the neck, duplicate, and in the edit mode, bring it to the bottom right. I scale up the height and use it as the arms. In the sculpt mode, add some simple muscles in the front and back. Select the neck again, and in the side view, shape it properly. Apply any mirror modifier you got in the Scene. Then select all of the body parts. Press Ctrl J to join them all together. And in the object data properties, remesh it so they all combine in one mesh. Now we can smooth it out. Take care of the bottom of the neck and then put some clay on the breasts. Then sculpt the bottom of the rib cage using clay strip brush. Pronounce the bottom of the breast using crease brush. Then work more on the muscles. If anything is decent, retopologize it. I have two videos covering this part for the head and the body. Check them out if you're interested. Once you retopologized it, and got the details back, you can work more on the details of the face while having the multi-res modifier enabled. For the clothing, add a plane. Using the same method as the retopology, I enabled the snap option on the top and extruded the plane while wrapping it around the body. I keep doing it until it covers the torso. Add a subdivision modifier to smooth it out. Using the exact same method, wrap the second part of the clothing around the arms and back. In the sculpt mode, using clay strip brush, I stretch the middle parts to the outside because we're gonna place it diamond pin in the middle and it just stretches the fabric. For the arms area, using the same brush, made some folds on the outside and smoothed it out. The folds are bigger because the fabric is loose here. Again by extruding the plane, I make the strips to hold the dress. I decided to add two more of these on the arms because I thought it was cute. Yeah it wasn't based on the sketch, my drawing, my rules and unfortunately you can't do sh** about it. Select the clothing. In the sculpt mode, I use the inflate brush to add some folds on the dress. The dress is tight so the folds shouldn't be loose because we need to make the fabric look stretched especially between the breasts and the sides when you had good amount of folds using crease brush make a line at the side of the dress for the stitches it gives a more realistic look to the clothing then some small folds around the stitches to make the fabric more stretch on those parts again using crease brush i make a line in the front of the dress and add the folds here as well for the diamond i add a cylinder squeeze it in the edit mode i select the faces around the middle and using checker adhesive 
select, ignore the half of the faces, extrude them down. Do the same thing for the other row too. And for the one in the middle, I extrude to the outside. And while the pivot point is on individual origins, scale them down. Then a subdivision surface modifier to smooth things out. Now it's time to place the diamond in it. Shift A in the mesh, go to diamonds and choose gem. If you don't have the option, you need to enable extra objects. It's an add-on, comes with the blender. I also have a quick tutorial about diamonds, you can check that one out if you like. Now in the edit mode, push the bottom to the top. Select the gem and the metal. Press Ctrl P and object to parent the diamond to the middle. Then place him on the dress. For the neck choker, using the same method, I wrap the plane around the neck. Then made simple shapes based on the sketch. Using blender basic meshes, I wanted some small diamonds on the dress, so I added another gem with 5 segments. Push the bottom up and while in the edit mode, I placed it on the dress. Added a mirror modifier to have it on the other side, then duplicate and spread it all over the dress. For the eyebrows, I use the plane. While snapping is enabled, I make it the shape of the eyebrows. I made a full tutorial about the stylized eyebrows and eyelashes. Check it out on the top right corner. I also explained how to add the details and textures, all that stuff. For the stylized hair, I use pad and circle curves. Use the circle as the geometry for the pad. Shape the circle and now it's ready to be placed on the head. I form the pad based on the sketch, making sure I get all the directions right to get something similar to the sketch. I explained everything about the stylized hair on my ultimate stylized hair video. Be sure to check it out for more. Direct bunch of them to the back of the head cause we're gonna have a ponytail. Made a simple strap to hold the hair, then duplicate some of those hair pads and bring it here to use as a ponytail. Then some small hair strands to finish things off. I UV unwrap the body to start painting on it. Use the lightest skin tone for the base. Put some red pinkish hint on the cheeks and nose and red color for the lips. Also you can watch the full tutorial on the top right corner. Some eyeliner for the makeup and some fake shadows in the nostrils. Do the UV unwrapping again for the dress and make sure UVs are not stretched. Using Quixel Bridge Library. I choose a fabric material and export it to Blender, but it's boring and generic, so I want to design some patterns on it. In a black image texture with a white brush, I added some random shapes that comes to mind. I have the X mirror enabled, so I paint on the both sides. After I'm done with the design, I added a mix RGB node. Connect the image we just painted to the factor. Now we can change the color of the base and the design separately. Again, I choose another fabric material from Quixel for this one too, and shiny material for the straps. I improved the shaders of the body Body by painting a roughness map and also generating a translucency map for the subsurface scattering. Again, I explained all of that in a skin painting video. Also got a full guide on how to make the eyes in Blender if you're interested. Added some fake shadows under the eyes to make them look better. Then added some simple meta human rig, delete the rest of the rig and used it to pose my character. I forgot to make the hair black so I do that here. For the lighting, I kept it pretty simple. I added an area light in the front then few colored ones in the back to add some nice contrast. I played with the colors to see what goes best for this character. I have to mention I use this lighting setup for EV only. For Cycles render, I disabled the base area light in the front and used this free HDRI map instead. Now for the animation, since it's just a quick animation, I used shape keys instead of actually fully rigging it. Made one shape key for the head movement and another one for each eye. Then also a camera movement to make things more interesting. Now by using the shape keys we just made, I can animate the head to move and eyes to follow the direction of the camera. Made bunch of other shape keys for the hair as well to bounce just a bit while moving. Added a bit of noise to the camera animation to make it look more handheld. And this is it. I hope you liked the video, if you did, be sure to like and sub for more videos like this, and again, you can download the 3D files and real time process of making this character in my Gumroad and Patreon page. See you on the next one, peace!